Hello, my name is Jim Kohler. I'm with the Graphic Arts Technology Group, working at International Papers Erie Research Center. The video you are about to watch will demonstrate a typical high-speed commercial web offset press. There are basically three types of web offset presses. The first is a small for business forms press for any paper in the 17 to 18 inch width range. These presses print only one side of the paper at a time. To print the back side, the sheet must be turned over on press. These presses are not heat set. In other words, ink is not dried by heat, but by absorption into the paper and air. Presses of this type will generally have web speeds in the range of 600 to 900 feet per minute. The second type of web is larger and prints paper in the 24 to 26 inch width range. This press is much like the press you're about to see in that it is heat set. Ink dries by heat. And it prints both sides of the paper at the same time. This type of press is known as a heat set perfector. Printing speeds for this type of press would be in the 900 to 1,000 feet per minute range, printing a total of eight, eight and a half by 11 pages at a time. The last type of press prints web widths from 30 to 38 inches with a typical width of 35 inches. The press is also heat set and prints both sides of the paper at the same time. The typical speed of this press would be in the 1400 feet per minute range, printing 16 pages at a time. There are, of course, larger and newer presses printing web widths up to 58 inches and speeds maximizing at 3,000 feet per minute. The press you will see in this video is a Heidelberg Harris M1000B web. This type of press prints both sides of the paper at the same time, drying the ink by heat, and then folding the printed paper into two eight-page signatures. The signatures are made up of page one, two, three, four, etc. The signatures will be collected later and bound by staples or some other bindery method to produce a publication. This type of press is a high volume press, printing magazines, publications, advertisements, direct mail, etc. Hammer mill and Spring Hill grades are natural for this type of press. To give you some idea, of the capital investment for a press of this type, a printer will spend in the area of $6 million, depending upon add-on equipment. As I indicated, this press is heat set, meaning that ink dries by heat. The typical heat set high speed web is made up of several components. The first is a roll stand, which supports the unwinding roll as well as a spare roll. The second is the tension controller to automatically monitor and adjust the tension of the paper being fed into the printing units. This press has four printing units using black, cyan, magenta, and yellow ink to produce color photographs, text, etc. Once the ink has been placed on the paper by the printing units, the solvent in the ink is evaporated in the heat set oven. Following the heat set oven, the web passes several chill rolls, which are rolls that have cold water running through them to help cool down the web and set the ink. Following the chill rollers, the press contains small coders on each side of the web to apply a light silicone water solution to the paper. This helps reduce marking on coated paper as it travels through the folder. These coders are also good for adding slight amounts of moisture back into the printed sheet. Following on press silicone coating, the web can be slid into two small webs, and these webs can then be cut and folded into the two eight-page signatures. Many of these presses will also contain a sheeter, allowing the web to be cut into sheets instead of folded signatures. Many presses of this type will also contain punching, perfing, and varnishing coating towers to apply specialty items to a printed product. To see how this press works, we will start at the beginning. Let's start by taking a closer look at the backstand. This is the start of the printing process, the backstand. This is where it all starts. We have two rolls, one being printed and one in waiting for splice. This is what's known as a zero span splicer. And you will see the mechanism and how this works later on during the video. From the back stand, we then proceed to the in-feed tension controller. Now the in-feed tension controller serves several purposes. One, it wants to control the tension from the controller to the brake in the back stand of the unwinding roll. This wants to isolate all those little oscillations we get from an unwinding roll so that a positive rate of feed, a constant rate of feed, is put into the printing units. If this is not maintained, registration or the alignment of images will start to go all over the place. Also, there's a web guide controller in here that keeps those lateral movements side to side, so to speak, in adjustment and in perfect alignment. Following the in-feed tension controller, now we hit the main four printing units. 
Now, while this press only has four printing units to produce a primary color photograph, there are many high-speed commercial webs that have six or even seven printing units. And the reason that is, is they want to have the four processed main colors, which are black, cyan, magenta, and yellow. But also, maybe they want a special pink or a special blue or a gold or another metallic. Well, they do that with special units. This is very common in commercial printing. Again, this press really has the four main units, consisting of the black printing unit. And once we print the black, we follow it up with the cyan printing unit, or the cyan ink, followed then by magenta, or a reddish color. And then finally, or last but not least, is yellow. And that completes the four colors. Well, once we put the ink on the paper, we have to now dry it. Now, this ink does not dry by absorption, as I indicated earlier. It dries by heat. So we pass it through a heat set dryer. This heat will evaporate the solvents in the ink. Now, the ink is still somewhat fluid. To set the ink permanently following the heat set oven is a chill roll section. This chill roll are rolls with water passing through, which will now set the ink, since it is fairly cool. Once we have set the ink in the chill roll sections, we will then send it into the folder and or, if we were so equipped, a sheeter. So we can either go into sheets or into folded signatures. Some presses of this type will even have punching, perfing, and coating towers to apply varnishes and other specialty items to the printed sheet. And with that, that really kind of completes the foundry or the formation of the printing process. Again, you start with a backstand, a tension controller, the four printing units or more, a heat set dryer, the chill roll section, and into a folder. As you can see, this type of press puts in a lot of demands on a piece of paper. High quality paper with excellent performance is what pressmen want. They don't want to shut the press down. They want to run as many rolls as possible in a given time. So only high quality paper counts to give not only good press performance, but good print quality. And hopefully with Hammer Mill Spring Hill, we can do that. Now in this tape, you're going to see more individualized components and see how they work. The backstand holds two rolls of paper, one being printed and the other in position for splicing at the conclusion of the running or printing roll. The roll in position to be spliced is still and is not moving or turning. Once a splice has been made, the operator will take the finished roll out and place a new roll into the empty backstand position. To do this, he will take the end caps off the roll and place a core shaft into the core. The operator will then place a new roll into position, readying it for splicing. To ready the roll for splicing, he will take the wrapper off and strip the first few wraps of paper off, which can contain light wrinkles or marks from the wrapping process. Obviously, the operator would like to take a minimum amount of waste off, as this is waste paper and not being used. The operator will examine the roll by feeling the surface for excessive wrinkles, corrugations, welts, bags, and other deficiencies that could cause printing problems. The operator will also feel the sides of the roll to make sure that no cuts or indentations are present, which could cause a web break. If defects are found, the operator may elect to pull the roll off for further inspection. Once the operator is satisfied with the roll, he will prepare it for the splicing process. He will bring the web up to the splicing mechanism and cut a clean edge and apply a vacuum to hold a new web.
A special splicing tape will be applied to the web to join the running roll with the new roll. A slight amount of grease is applied on the edges of the web to help slip the splice through the blanket nips as the ink and water on the blankets could break the web. To see how a splice is made, you'll see in this animation that the roll on the right is the running or printing roll, and the roll on the left is the roll readied for splicing and stationary. Above the two rolls is a festoon, which contains about 80 feet of paper, give or take, depending upon the type of press and speed. The festoon consists of several rollers and holds enough paper to feed the press during the splice since the new roll is not running. This festoon system allows the new roll to come up to speed. Once the splice is ready to be made, the festoon begins feeding paper to the press. The splice is made, the old web cut, and the new running roll is accelerated up to press speed, allowing the festoon to start storing paper for the next splice. You now can see an actual splice being made as the operator would see it. The running roll is near completion. And the splice is made. The impede tension controller follows the backstand. This unit isolates the distortions from the backstand and press and provides a constant and even rate of paper to the printing units. This is important to maintain color registration and operational control. We're going to visit one of the typical printing units used on this press to print four colors. We're going to go in and take a look at the magenta printing unit, which is the third printing unit. As you can see, it's comprised of a blanket, an offset plate, and the inking system. A fountain solution of dampening unit is on the other side of the unit, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. As I indicated earlier in the tape, this is a perfecting press, meaning we're printing both sides of the paper at the same time. Thus, the bottom of the press is a mirror image of the top, meaning we have a blanket, an offset plate, and another inking unit with the web traveling in between to print both sides at the same time. And you'll notice one thing about this press. The blanket cylinder is twice the diameter of the plate cylinder, meaning the plate cylinder must make two revolutions for one revolution of the blanket. The reason this was done on this particular model of press was for speed. This press does run at 1,400 feet per minute, but will attain speeds at top speed of 2,000 feet per minute and this was done for this reason. Now, the contamination from paper, fiber bundles, vessel segments, uh, fiber itself, will transfer to the blanket, pulled from the surface of the sheet, and in many cases, starch scale can trap up into the non-image areas in the plate and cause contamination in the print. This material will go even farther sometimes and trap itself up into the inking unit. What goes up can come back down, and it's a recirculating process. The effect is, the pressman must stop the press, wash the blankets to eliminate the contamination in the paper. Now the back side of this unit, and we'll look at the yellow unit since it's easier to get to, shows the ink sump. There's one on the top, one on the bottom, and the fountain solution system. Now the ink is pumped in via a tote bin. 
and it's a constant system. It's a sonar device to pump in only what's needed. Since it's a heat set operation, remember the heat is needed to dry the ink. We can leave the ink in the sumps and it won't dry up. This is the fountain solution, and it's recirculated through a cooling unit to keep the fountain solution cool. And with that, that concludes what a press unit looks like. We're at the ink feed station where ink is supplied to the press for printing. You'll notice we're pumping out a 400-pound tote bins. The commercial printer will use something about four to five times this to supply his ink to the press. Since this is only a four-color press, we are using the primary ink colors, which are yellow, magenta, which is a form of red, cyan, which is a form of blue, and black, which, of course, is a form of black. Ink is pumped via pneumatic pump, which is controlled by a sonic leveler in the ink fountain. As the sonic leveler uh, senses that the ink is decreasing, the pump is activated and pumps more ink into the system. As the system level comes up, the sonic device senses that and shuts the, the pump off. We also can monitor how much ink we're using for a particular job, as there is a pump counter to record in pounds, and that way, we as the printer will know how much ink we have used totally for a job. This is the uh, inking and fountain solution unit uh, that applies the ink and the fountain solution to the offset plate. Now you notice in the bottom yellow uh, where the ink is pumped in automatically uh, from a, a tote bin, uh, a mixer travels back and forth to keep the ink, uh, so, to, so to speak, in solution. There's a ductor roller that picks up the ink and transfers it to the inking system. Now, if the pr pressman wants more ink across the whole width of the paper, he speeds that ductor roll up to apply more ink. But if he wants just one spot of ink uh, on a certain area of the paper, uh, he can open up a position, and you'll notice the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., going across the width of the press. He can open one or a series of these at any location to allow a small amount of ink in that particular location to be applied to, to uh, increase ink density. Up above, we have the fountain pan uh, and a roller which basically picks up the, the fountain solution and applies it to a series of rollers which finally applies it to the offset plate. We're now at the fountain solution sump area where fountain solution is pumped to all four of the units. Now, the fountain solution's purpose on the press is to keep the non-image areas clean on the plate. In other words, we don't want ink to print on the non-image areas where it's not wanted. That's the fountain solution's function. Now this sump holds around 50 gallons of fountain solution, supplying it to all four units, which is then recirculated back to this unit. Containing in this unit, we also have a filtration system to take that return material, try to clean it and remove the contaminants from paper, and then feed clean fountain solution back to the press units. We also have, on this particular unit, a chilling device. In other words, we can cool the fountain solution down to around 62, 63 degrees Fahrenheit. The reason we do that is very simple. We want to raise the viscosity by cooling it to allow that fountain solution to transfer on the dampening rollers much easier. We also can measure conductivity. Conductivity is a measurement we printers use to measure contaminants coming into the system caused by paper. We also can take a manual measurement of pH. Now this fountain solution is acidic. Its pH is around 4.0. That's very important because one of the materials used in fountain solution is called etch. We need to know that as that pH rises, that etch becomes less effective. A fountain solution is very simple. It's a pre-mixed etch mixed in with water, and that's all it is. Following printing, the web enters the heat set oven to evaporate the ink solvents and begin drying the ink. The oven has top and bottom nozzles which supply heat and float the web. Normal temperatures would be in the range of 350 degrees oven temperature, resulting in web temperatures in the 250 degree range. Once the web exits the heat set oven, we need to cool the web down and set the ink. Web temperatures at this point will be in the neighborhood of 250 degrees Fahrenheit. To cool the web down, heat set presses contain a series of chill rolls. This press is configured with four chill rolls. Chill rolls operate by pumping cold water through them. 
The cold rolls will draw the heat out from the web, cooling it down to ambient temperatures. The other function of the chill roll section is to control tension going into the folder. Following the chill roll section, the web will pass through a web positioning device, which will keep the alignment of the web side to side. Following the web tensioning device, the web will then pass through small coders on each side of the web. These coders will apply a light silicone water static eliminator mixture to the surface of the web. This is done to help prevent sheet marking when passing through the folder and to help add some moisture back into the web and to help eliminate static. The web is then slid into two small webs, known as ribbons. Using a series of turn bars, this will redirect the web to the folder for folding and then cutting. To fold the web, a device known as a former or plow board is used. Sheet strength is very important here, as there is a very high amount of sheet stress when passing over this device. Cracking at the fold will occur at this point. Following the plow board, the web is cut by a rotary cutting cylinder, which we are unable to see, and the signatures are then transferred onto delivery belts to the signature stackers. As we're testing in this video, the signatures are not being stacked and gathered as a normal printer would do for the bindery operation. To keep the alignment of colors, the press uses an automatic registration device. This is very important to the printer as he must keep black in proper alignment with cyan, magenta, yellow, and any other colors the press may be printing. Any colors that are not properly aligned will make the images fuzzy and out of place. Moving to the control panel, which controls the various mechanical press functions such as oven temperatures and air velocities, speed and tension control, impression count, web brake detectors, main press faults, etc. Moving to the inking system, the press person can control each color. Black top and bottom, cyan top and bottom, magenta top and bottom, and yellow top and bottom by engaging the proper button. The press console electronically changes the unit we want to change. If we want to change magenta bottom, we engage the bottom magenta button, and the bottom magenta inking keys will become activated. The press person can also maintain the ink fountain for total flow of ink to the web. The operator can measure his ink densities by using a densitometer and then raise or lower the ink in various sections of the printed sheet as needed. If the operator sees, for example, that more black is needed in a certain section of the printed sheet, he can go to the proper unit and make the change. To keep proper ink and water balanced, dampening is also controlled here at the main press console. The press person can activate buttons just as he does with the inking devices to keep the ink and water balance in control. The pressman will constantly monitor ink densities so to conform to preset customer specifications, assuring total print quality and uniformity.
Well, there you have it. You've seen the workings of a high-speed commercial web press. As you have seen, these presses are built for productivity, performance, and quality. Due to the speed and impact of this press, excellent paper performance is a must. If you would like any further information, please feel free to call me at the Erie Research Center located on the beautiful banks of Lake Erie.